In this video, we're going to look at using the LM393 integrated circuit. It's a comparator. We're going to wire it up so that it's an inverting comparator. So it's going to take the voltage of these two inputs. We will turn, uh, turn the trim pot down towards negative a little bit and then turn the uh, power supply on. Now you can see that the output is on. The LED is on. The LED is wired to be uh, turned on when there's a higher voltage at the output. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So you can see we got a lower voltage at the trim pot. The trim pot's a voltage divider. We can set the voltage from between 5 volts positive rail to a 0 volts negative rail. We're closer to the negative rail so we're below 2.5 volts. We turn it up above about 2.5 volts. Now you see the LED turns off because we set the voltage for 2.5 volts. We'll talk about that coming up. But in uh, any case, as you can see, the uh, signal, the output signal, which is strong enough to light an LED, so it's strong enough to power an LED, but ultimately it's a signal, is inverted from the signal that we're giving from the trim pot here. That's what we are using to control our input. So let's take this uh, circuit apart and build it up step by step to get a better look at what each, each component is doing. So to begin with, we'll look at the integrated circuit itself. So it has actually two comparators within it. So it compares the voltage difference between 2 and 3 or the voltage between 6 and 5 and based on that voltage difference it outputs either a high or low signal at either pin 1 or uh, pin number 7. So this is a dual inline package. You can tell that it's made out of plastic and there's pins down two sides that fit into a breadboard. So I had to kind of squeeze them to fit easily, but uh, they do fit into the breadboard. Uh, not too bad. They're just a little wide when you get them, and that's pretty typical. So in any case, we have a divot up here. You can see that pretty clearly. Divot there. And uh, there's also a little divot on top. And so we got both of them here. Some of these integrated circuits have one or the other, but either case, you put it to the top and then this one will be off to the left and then you start to the left working your way down to get the numbers so one two three four one two three four there's longer integrated circuits you keep going but uh, no matter how long it is finally you get to the bottom you jump over and work your way up so now five six seven eight and we're just going to use the comparator on this side of the integrated circuit so you can already see the green jumper that is to pin number two that is our inverting pin so the dash the negative means inverting so that might be a little easier to remember its purpose if you remember that that means inverting and plus means non inverting but the control is going to the inverting pin and that is why our output is the opposite of our input when it comes to whether it is a high signal or a low signal. And before we move on, I just want to mention there's a wide range of voltages we can use. We can go down to 2 volts according to the data sheet. I haven't done any circuits that low. Or up to 36 volts. Again, I don't go that high so I haven't tested it out. But that's the range they give you. So that's with a single power supply. You could also use a dual or split power supply where you have a positive 1 volt down to a negative 1 volt, which is really the same as 2 volts. Or you can have a positive 18 volts down to a negative 18 volts, which is the same as a 36 volts. And there's a ground that's a 0 volt reference point halfway between the positive and negative voltages. That's why there is a positive and negative voltage. So you can use either to power this integrated circuit. So now, let's get to the build. The first thing we'll do is go to the output. So I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see what's going on a little easier. And the integrated circuit here does not output a positive signal. It just doesn't work that way. You actually have to provide a positive signal. That's what this resistor is for. So we will add the resistor to uh, the positive rail over to there. So I'm using a one kilo ohm resistor because looking through the data sheet it looks like they don't want you using more than uh, 16 milliamps of current. The LED of course can go to 20 milliamps but uh, the integrated circuit itself we'll talk about later will take in that current 
when it's in the off position and uh, so from what I understand you don't want to go above about 16 milliamps so one kilo ohm keeps it below that and so we have that there we will grab the LED so the positive signal comes from the resistor to the pin and uh, so we put the long lead the anode to where the pin is short lead the cathode I'm going to go up one row and I have a jumper here that goes to the negative rail if you saw my last video I had the trim pod in the same spot and this green jumper and so I had the green jumper go going to a pin number three though and so this integrated circuit was up one more and I had to angle that uh, jumper over there so all I did in this video was just move the integrated circuit down plus uh, the power pins and uh, it works out better this way but in uh, any case if you didn't see that video uh, don't worry about it so let's throw in the uh, trim pot now the uh, trim pot is going to the inverting pin so you can see up here it's going to pin number two that was the inverting pin and uh, we'll just put in the breadboard these trim pots they kind of have a tight fit going into the breadboard but for the most part they go in not too bad and so we have it set as a voltage divider the power supply rails are on both of the inputs here and then there's a resistive path and depending on where this knob is turned now it's all the way positive and uh, we can keep turning it all the way negative the board likes to kind of push this out so it'll pop out from time to time but uh, there's a resistive element and a wiper that slides across based on where the knob is and that sets the resistance between one or the other pins and ultimately that gives us a voltage from 5 volts to 0 volts so that's going to pin to our inverting pin now the non-inverting pin for this circuit we're going to give it a fixed voltage so this will be our voltage reference point last circuit we did was a non-inverting comparator circuit we set our reference voltage there and changed our voltage over here but uh, for this video we're going to set our voltage at the non-inverting pin and so we're going to use two fixed resistors since it's 5 volt power supply we'll have 2.5 volts at that pin we're going to use 10 kilo ohm resistors because you just need very little uh, current you just need to set the voltage this pin doesn't take in really any current just a small amount I couldn't even measure it with my multimeter so you don't have to worry about the current and uh, so you can use higher value resistors and uh, 10 kilo ohms is uh, pretty common so we're going to take one put it to the positive rail and then put that to pin 3 right there and then I'm going to nestle the other resistor right in between there so negative rail to uh, pin number 3 again right there and they're made they're not conductive on uh, this plastic part I think that's plastic covered and so you can set them right next to each other like that but in any case that is all there is to this circuit it's uh, pretty simple and uh, we turn the power supply on you can see the trim pot is down towards the negative rail and then when I turn it the LED was on when I turn it towards the positive rail now the LED is off so now over here I have a diagram that's similar to uh, other ones I find that kind of help Im illustrate what's happening first off I mentioned the output is saturated really it's only saturated in uh, the off position but uh, in any case it pretty much completely cuts off the voltage or else we have pretty much the full power supply voltage other than some uh, losses which uh, doesn't make it perfect but uh, makes it a pretty good switch so in any case when the input is a higher voltage even when it's changing we have the output is off and uh, that's in relationship to the reference voltage we drop below the reference voltage even when it's changing then the output goes completely on and to about the uh, power supply voltage through the resistor though that's the uh, the main thing whatever losses you get through the resistor so you gotta take that into account but in any case doesn't matter if it's a slow change a rapid change whatever it's just whether it is above or below the line like that and the signal is inverted so you'll see a lot of when you look at what transistors and integrated circuits and 
are doing and stuff you're looking at the input and the output you'll see a lot of graphs kinda like this that show you their relationship to each other so it's important to learn how to read those so now I illustrated the current paths which I hope is helpful and uh, I feel like it should be helpful I don't see anybody else do this but uh, in any case let's turn the uh, trim pot so that the LED is on as we said before the 393 does not provide the high signal we just basically permanently affix a high signal with the resistor and so we got the one kilo ohm resistor and the LED so you can see that basically as far as the LED is concerned the rest of the circuit doesn't exist it's just that resistor and uh, but for all intents and purposes we kind of consider the resistor part of the uh, op amp so the output is high right now and let's turn the uh, trim pot might as well go to this image first let's uh, turn the trim pot so that the LED turns off and uh, we already talked about the signals I'm not going to go into that but now the LED is off so what's happening now is that there's still current going through the resistor but the 393 LM393 now is connecting the output pin here directly to ground internally and so whatever energy gets through the resistor and uh, the current it's just going to get sucked right to ground so basically we have zero volts right there uh, it's a little bit higher we looked at that in the last video but uh, so it's not 100 percent perfect but definitely the voltage has dropped enough where the LED is not going to light because we got negative there negative there and uh, so it's much easier for positive here to get sunk down to negative over there and uh, avoiding the LED so that's why the output is off and uh, the LED will not be on now because the current just gets sunk directly to ground and that's really just the way it works there's an NPN transistor the data sheet goes into it in more detail and right now in this situation that transistor is on but it's connected to ground and then here the transistor is off and there's no connection just comes to a dead end 